Hello and welcome to another episode of the PRFC Fan Show, a fan show by fans for fans. I'm Kevin. And frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. <laughs> All right. I'm going to give you slack because we are on a high from last night. I would say. New record, 11 consecutive league wins. It was huge. And you know what? We're going to keep on going as we're going to find out in the future. We did so well against Tulsa in the second half. They gave us trouble in the first half, right? Oh, yeah. So what I think we're learning is, is even though we might have trouble in the first half, we've got a coach who's willing to adjust at halftime, change up the game, a team that can execute those adjustments, and go and pull off the win, get the three points. Hashtag shots in. There we go. <laughs> Where do you come up with that? That's awesome. Yeah, I've always been a believer in you, Rick. You know that I've always had your back. Very glad to see the success for the team last night. And we have LA Galaxy 2 coming up, right? That's going to be our next game. And right now, holding a record for consecutive wins, we're going to have people lining up to stop us. So I uh, honestly wouldn't be surprised to see Zlatan on the pitch next time. Um, but we'll just have to wait and find out. Um, so as for right now, we've got some USL yeah, some USL no. And Kevin did an interview with Mustafa Dumbuya. That's going to be fantastic. Stick around. USL, yeah. Rumors have been floating around that the USL may push MLS 2 or reserve teams currently in the USL Championship League to League 1. There's a great article by Sam Steskel on TheAthletic.com that is a great read on the topic. Additionally, Sam was interviewed by Phil Grooms of the USL show that is chock full of information. If you want a deeper dive than you will get with this short segment, check them out. I applaud the USL for pushing this agenda, and it doesn't surprise me that the MLS seems to be pushing back. The USL reminds me of a woman who comes to realize that she is actually beautiful and that her boyfriend who says she is just okay is a controlling jerk. In this case, that beautiful woman needs to tell her jerk boyfriend, the MLS, that she is going to do what is best for her, and if he doesn't like it, he can stuff it. I am a relative newcomer to U.S. football. Until I bought my 2017 Phoenix Rising tickets, I barely paid attention to the MLS, let alone the USL. I was wrapped up in the Bundesliga, so I wasn't around when the USL started up, but I understand it relied heavily on MLS 2 teams to get the league kick started. I've no doubt these teams were key to the league's success. But that was then, and this is now, and in its current state, the USL has good reason for this move. In many cases, the goals of reserve teams and USL Championship League are not aligned. Hence, we see squads with 15, 16, and 17-year-olds facing off with teams such as Phoenix Rising that are much more experienced. It just doesn't make for a fun game. From a player development perspective, that is a great thing. And I cannot emphasize this next point enough, a USL Championship League is not a development league for the MLS. USL Championship League is a league that should be composed of teams that want to compete to win the trophy at the end of the season. Some reserve teams do not have this as a goal. They simply want game time for their players, whether they be youngsters being developed or MLS players being sent down to get time on the pitch when there isn't much opportunity for them with the parent team. Again, there is nothing wrong with this, but Championship League is not the place for this to happen. League One is much more appropriate. Given the short duration of the segment, I can't get into the financial side of this topic, but I will say this much. USL does not owe the MLS a single thing. They need to do what is best for them. No great company rose to greatness without cracking some eggs in the process. And while some might claim the sky is falling today, adjustments will be made and business will continue. There are MLS teams that have made substantial investments in their reserve teams. They field competitive squads and draw acceptable attendance. In those cases, they should be welcome in the championship league because of their investment and because of the way that they are producing today. That is a fair compromise. The rest should be moved to League One. As with promotion and regulation in the MLS, some argue that a financial impact should end any talk of moving reserve teams to League One. And just like with Pro Reg, while a solution to this might not be simple, it can be done. Much more complicated financial transactions occur in the business world every year, so there is a way to resolve this issue. 
The question is, will the MLS and the MLS teams be willing to find that solution, or as I suspect, does the MLS not give a flying rat's ass and thus will not be cooperative? Only time will tell. What I do know is the USL is coming to fully realize they have a solid brand, great teams playing ball, and a culture and fan base that over time only gets bigger and better. Just like that woman who has a jerk for a boyfriend, the US is re USL is realizing that it has outgrown the MLS, that it can stand on its own two feet, and maybe, just maybe someday, be bigger and better than the MLS. Improving the quality of the Championship League is a necessary big step forward, and that is why moving reserve teams to League One gets a big USL yeah from me. USL no! The beautiful game can sometimes be a dangerous game, as we saw in the recent Four Corners Cup matchup between Real Monarchs and New Mexico United. In the 73rd minute, Ricardo Avila came in hard and nearly horizontal in a challenge on Kevon Freider. His studs were up. He caught Freighter's leg, and he caught the surface. Avila received a fair yellow card, and is currently recovering from surgery from the pretty terrible injury he received. There were a couple factors which led to this horrific incident, one inherent to the game, one which the league has absolute control over, but continually pushes to the back burner. First off is the style of play, which just is what it is. New Mexico United play a quick, aggressive game of football, contributing to the young club's deep run in the cup and playoff-ready table position, but also to their 8th in League 42 yellow cards. Monarchs knew this heading into the match, and they were ready to, to defend their home turf with equal aggression. This isn't a case of boys will be boys, it's a case of footballers will be footballers. Look no further than Becky Sauerbrunn, who won the World Cup while bleeding from the face for 40 full minutes. But back to the match. We've arrived at the 73rd. Monarchs are defending a shaky 1-0 lead. In the Monarchs' build-up, there was a clear foul that wasn't called, despite no clear advantage. But play continued, leading to Avila suffering the worst injury of the USL Championship season. The game footage I saw made it look like a full tib-fib fracture. Nine times out of ten, I say that's a bad sprain on grass. Zion's Bank Stadium, unfortunately, chose a state-of-the-art artificial surface from the Netherlands. You know, the country where the Top Flight Players Union officially urged the first di division to ban artificial surfaces, where Davi Klaassen, captain of Ajax, said turf makes him consider leaving the country. It's a decades-long battle in sports. Owners want the ease of turf maintenance. Players want to be able to walk without a cane in their 40s. Grass has existed since the Cretaceous period. We literally evolved to walk on it. The sugar and wheat in your breakfast are both made of grass. 40% of all land is covered with this stuff. There's no need to reinvent the wheel here, folks. The potential risk to players is absolutely not worth the money you save on irrigation. Casino Arizona Field manages to have natural grass, and um, they positioned it next to a river so dry, there's a road through it. So owners, ask yourself, is it really worth the risk to your players? I'll give you a hint. The answer is USL no. So Dan, as you know, because you were there earlier this week, I was able to go and interview Mustafa Dumbaya. It was fantastic, let me tell you. He is a great kid. I loved his outlook. He's a great player and adds so much to the team. Oh yeah. So there was something about Mustafa that you really did like. There was one little thing I think everyone will see when it happens, um, but it, it may have had something to do with overseas football. Yeah, possibly, possibly. It was so funny because when Mustafa brought it up, Dan's eyes just whoop, just went huge. So without further ado, we're going to bring you the interview. Check it out. I am here with Mustafa Dumbaya, and <laughs> I am really, really excited because I've wanted to talk to you for quite a while now. I was just kissing his butt because I was telling him my next jersey is going to have his name and number on it, which is, you know... Horribly, on horribly it, butt kissing, it, but, it, it. <laughs> <laughs> it. but it's true, man. Um, also, uh, I, I tend to have a girlfriend a season. Hopefully, this one's gonna stick. <laughs> nice. But she's. We had this bet going on because she calls Solomon her hummingbird because okay. he's like all, all over the place. place. Yeah, yeah, she's from Thailand, so oh, it's kind of okay. yeah, yeah. She's you know, um, and we're having this argument because yeah. she's like, there's another player and, and he's. He's like Solomon. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what do you mean? And she's like, well, he's, he's shorter like Solomon. Yeah. 
and she keeps pointing at Mala. I'm like, no, Mala's a monster. Yeah. He's, a, he's a little bit taller than me. And then finally, she figured out it was you. Yeah. And I was like, well, why is, and you're not that short, first of all. You're 5'8", 5'9". Yeah, for the record, ladies, okay? I'm five eight, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then she's going on about your hair. Okay. And I'm like, yeah, okay, there it is. Because Dia used to have yeah, the hair yeah. of the team, right? Uh -huh. Then you just kind of came in and slapped yeah, Dia. My, my hair's a bit longer than Dia's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys had that conversation by any chance? Yeah, we have actually. When I first came, it was like, yeah, I look a bit like him. And obviously I play fullback as well, uh, outside back. So we've had that conversation before. Okay. Yeah, yeah, with the hair and all of that stuff. It's so funny because we sit um, just between the team bench and the coaches bench on the second row. Okay. And so you come down the sideline with Solomon a lot, which yeah, we'll yeah, talk yeah. about later. Yeah. And she'll just watch your hair and she's just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> which I'm pretty sure is the reaction of most of the women in the stadium. Yeah. Just as, you know, for, you know, PSA statement. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's start talking about you a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you were born in Africa in oh. Sierra Leone. I was, yes. And then, because of civil unrest, you moved to England, Yeah, right? because of the civil war, I came. I left Sierra Leone when I was four, just turning five. Okay, so you're yeah, four, yeah. just turning five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what part of England did you move to? I went to North London, Tottenham. Oh, did you? Really? Yes, yes. So you're a Spurs fan? I'm an Arsenal fan. Oh. Yeah, and I literally, <laughs> and I literally lived just behind the Spurs stadium. Do you really? Yeah, yeah, oh. Literally. <laughs> See, Dan got chills. I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. <laughs> it's the best team in North London. Oh, you know, there you go. Dan, <laughs> Dan loves you even more now. Um, how much in a, I'm an Army brat. I moved around a lot. Uh -huh. um, four to five years old. I don't remember a lot there, but I do remember moving. How much in a, of an adjustment was it for you? Moving from Sierra Leone to UK? Yeah. Um, obviously, I, I left when I was young, so it wasn't that big of an adjustment. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, just trying to speak English. That was literally it. So French to English? Uh, we speak, um, pa uh, similar to Patois, we speak broken English. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Called, it's called Creole. Creole. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, so it wasn't that hard to, for me to start speaking English, but that was kind of the hardest thing for me. So I used to play uh, footy with a lot of guys from Ghana. Okay. And um, so they spoke Twi and you yes, know a couple yes. of derivatives and that whole thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, it's not an easy transition for sure. And yes. culturally, it's huge. Yeah, yes. huge. Uh, but you're glad you were in the UK, you enjoyed... Oh yeah, the yeah, for sure. But I do go back home a lot to see my family and stuff. So that was my other question. Yeah. You just let into ah, it. Sorry. Where is family for you? Sierra Leone. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Most of my family is in Sierra Leone still. So do they get any real on you uh, on TV? Do you get to see, do they get to see highlights? Or it's games? more the highlights than um, watching the full games. Yeah, okay. they watch a lot of the highlights and just kind of message me to say, oh, well done, congratulations on the win and stuff like that. Very good. Do they mock your accent? Uh, they do actually. You yeah. know? They actually do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they keep saying, oh, you're English now, you're English. Uh, you forget about us, but yeah. Oh, you're very English. Yeah, very, very English. <laughs> That's so funny. Have they ever been able to come out to a, a game for you in your career at all? Um, when I was playing uh, back in the UK, mm -hmm. uh, my mum came out to a few games, my brother came out to a few games, but my mum doesn't like to watch me play. She hates when people tap me and stuff, so um, yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> she, hates, she hates seeing that side of the game. Well, so she, she wouldn't yeah, like she's that She's only been awesome. to like two games. Oh, only two games? Yeah, yeah, wow. in my career, yeah. That's rough. Yeah. That's rough. Yeah. So you must miss them. I'm sure that you're in thoughts and everything. Oh, for sure. You're... Definitely. Um, it's a good thing she didn't watch that Austin game. We're going to get to yeah. that too. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, we don't talk about injuries on the show, but we do have semi-related questions. And, that, you know, Jose will shoot me down if, uh, if I do anything that's, <laughs> that's wrong. So, sure. um, you know, one of the things, and, and honestly, you know, I've got the Wikipedia page on you yeah. because it always does a great career highlight. And you did some bopping around in, in the yeah, UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. League two, League one play. Uh, um, I haven't played in League two. No, I thought uh, I thought there was one League two game. No, um, no, I haven't played. Okay, so yeah, League one yeah, and it's championship, it's championship League. League one, yeah. 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 So the Doncaster Rovers. Yes. What a what a great time it seems like for you. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the team, how you ended up there, what you did there, what position you played, how it all played out. So when I initially started my career, I was actually a center midfielder. Oh, I really? Hold, yeah, I played holding midfield. And um, find it like I was playing uh, in conference, I think it was conference, conference south at the time. And there was interest from Doncaster. But they wanted me to come over there as a right back. So I was forming an R and I was like, uh, I've never played right back before. So I don't, I don't really know. 
I was talking to my coach. My coach is like, look, this is a big opportunity for you to go to the championship. Like, you've gone from conference to the championship. So just go over there for a week and just see what happens. So I was like, okay, cool. So I've gone over there. I've trained like two days. And then I've played Grimsby Town in a pre-season game. And they put me right back there. I haven't looked back since then. <laughs> so what were your nerves like that first game? Oh, I was game? so nervous. I've never been that nervous in my life, honestly. Because um, I was thinking I'm going to the championship here. I've played conference majority of my career at that time. And I've gone straight to the conference. That's one league below the premiership. So I was like, am I good enough? Am I good enough to go there? And I went there and just hit the ground running. A lot of personality in that league. Yeah. Gotta love it. The fans too. The yeah. fans are just stellar. Yeah. Um, fondest memories of, of playing back there? My debut against Sheffield United. Yeah? Yeah. That was like, I came on for like holy, I think it was 10, 10 minutes. But I was so nervous. I was so nervous. It was like 30,000, 40,000 fans. I've never played in that kind of crowd before. That's a big crowd. So yeah. Those were the like longest ten minutes of my life. <laughs> just walking on the pitch. Yeah, just yeah. walking on and just like thinking, just don't mess this up. Yeah. How close were you to puking? Because uh, oh, very close. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very close. I can remember days where I would just be walking on the pitch, and this is for nothing games, right? Yeah. But for me, they were important. Yeah. And just thinking, man, I just got to swallow it down. Yeah. I can't. But then once you start, you know, getting your legs under you, exactly. it settles. But yeah. At first, you're like, I'm literally going to throw up and run down the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know what it was that I screwed up is that Doncaster Rovers were in League Two, but not when you were. Oh, when I was there. Yeah, I was yeah. in the championship when I went to them. Yeah, yeah which is very cool. Yeah. Now, we're going to move on to Patrick Thistle. Yes. Okay, yeah. Scottish Premier League, for those of you who don't know it. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to prepare, and I just ran out of time because yeah. I wanted to find him on FIFA. And oh, play him on yeah. FIFA? Yeah, okay, yeah. Do you ever play him on FIFA? I don't play games. Oh, you don't play? No, oh, I that's don't, a I don't, first. I don't own a console. Oh, good yeah. for you, man. Yeah. He has a, <laughs> he has a life. Listen, kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't play it at all. That's, you know, that's the best answer because usually some of the guys are like, oh, we play Fortnite instead. And I'm like, mm. oh, come on. Uh, Here, not kill me. me. Not okay. Me. Well, I'm going to report to you because I'm going to play. I play Shamrock Rovers all oh, the time okay, yes. from Republic of Ireland. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I love them because they suck and they're just a blast. <laughs> they suck. <laughs> well, Hopefully no one's listening from Shamrock here. Well, no, on FIFA, on FIFA. <laughs> no, not, not in real life, but in FIFA. Yeah, yeah. Because in FIFA, you know, your players, they can, like if you're on Bayern Munich or something, you got Ribery and he's just like... Yeah, Whoa. in and out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they're wingers, man. They're just like turning a battleship. <laughs> they're just like I yelling at the screen. carrying a bus. Yeah. Oh, it's bad. Yeah. Tell me about what it was like to play in Scotland. And how was it different from playing in the UK? I'm dying to know. It was cold. Yeah. Okay. Scotland's really cold. Um, but um, playing in Scotland, it was more, it was very physical. It was a mm -hmm. physical league. And it's a league that's dominated by Celtic and Rangers. You know, like you're going there and just expecting them to win the league all the time and, you know, win the cup, win everything really. So it's, at the club level, that's that's yeah, their expectation. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, a, yeah. that's it's, a shame. It's, it's a it's a league that's dominated majority by because Rangers came up. I think that season I signed. I think they just come up because they were playing in the in the championship at the time. Okay. And it it was dominated by Celtic. Rangers came up. They done okay, but we finished top six. The, my first year we've done really really well that's fantastic yeah, yeah 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 so that was a big achievement that was the first time for the club to do to, to finish in the top six in the league so that was a massive achievement uh, yeah. what position did you play i was playing right back so you're right yeah, back yeah, i've been i've been playing right back since I ever since yeah, yeah okay yeah. yeah all right so you obviously played against celtic yeah what was it like being on the pitch with a with a team that just has that rich i mean all yeah. teams have history but it's sure. celtic oh that's, that's a massive team it's a huge, huge team. Um, I think that when I was playing, when I played against Celtic, I've played enough games now. I was, I'm not kind of nervous to play against big sides anymore. I've played against bigger teams, mm -hmm. you know, and um, it was just more just me enjoying it, really. Just the, the atmosphere is amazing at um, Pride Park. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's different. So what percentage of Scottish football fans do you think actually remember the game after they leave the stadium? Not much. Yeah. It's very great. Not much. <laughs> Especially when um, it's the, um, the derby against Rangers. I think the majority of the fans are drunk. Yeah. Yeah. 
I always, I always thought that, you know, if you wanted to beat a Scottish team, you just sneak a bottle of Glenfiddich by their bench. And just <laughs> they do love a, a bit of that, yeah. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and just kind of take that on. Yeah. So the cold is, is a big factor. Yeah, for um, sure. You know, we played Louisville in the final last year. Yeah. It was like 40 some odd yeah, degrees. Yeah. Some of the boys were talking about that actually, yeah. Yeah, so as fans, I was there uh, with a bunch of other fans. I was not prepared clothing wise at all. Yeah. I froze, so I just drank bourbon and tried to keep away. <laughs> um, but the cold looked like it was affecting the team yeah. to a degree. Mm -hmm. Now, you're the opposite of that. You're used to playing in the in cold, the cold yeah. and you've got the, this. Yeah. How does it affect your play? How do you adjust? When I initially first came here, it was tough. It was really tough. Like in training, I would literally last for like five, ten minutes and I'm pouring water all over myself and my boots, everything. But the more you play in it, the, the more you start getting used to it and adjust to it. So I think now I'm, I'm pretty much adjusted to it. You put in uh, some full, you put 90 minutes on the field before. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, well, I think what, twice so far this season that you've been in the full 90? Mm -hmm. Or has it been more than that? I've been more sure. Has it been more than yeah, that? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I always forget statistics yeah, like that, yeah, so yeah. ignore me. But um, the the guys who do put in the full ninety, because um, I've tried to play in this heat mm -hmm. years ago, and yeah. I just I don't know how you guys do yeah, it. Yeah, it's tough. It's insane. Yeah, it's really tough. So um, when you're when you're playing and you're going against these other guys, how much of an advantage do you think you have against these guys who might be from Colorado or something and aren't yeah. used to the heat? Oh, it's a big advantage, you know. Regardless of the heat, this is our home pitch. You mm -hmm. know, this should, this should be our fortress at the end of the day. So, the heat is an added bonus. But I feel like this this is our home, and we should, no matter if, like the heat or what the temperature is, we should win. And you got yeah. the South End going for you. Yeah, for you sure. Know? Yeah, yeah. Fury and uh, Banditos, you know, they're, yeah, they're they're awesome. They're awesome, man. They're really really good. How much smack are you talking to the other team players when you're when you're out there? Cause I watch for it. I honestly haven't seen you do that much, and I I'm always watching for it. I don't I don't talk a lot of smack. The only thing I kind of do is when we're coming out for the start of the match, I just kind of speak to a few of the players. I'm like, oh, it's kind of hot today, isn't it? It's kind of hot. I kind of get into their head a bit. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing. I, that's the only thing I really do. But on the pitch, I don't talk no smack. I talk, yeah. Nah, I don't say nothing. Unlike a couple other players where nah, you yeah. you see some con yeah, and of course. Yeah, yeah. I'm in midfield, so a lot of people don't do stuff, but I'm talking as much smash as I can. <laughs> I actually had a player flip me off uh, on the field. Oh, yeah. uh, St. Louis, uh, what's his name? Andrew Bell, okay. uh, striker for uh, St. Louis. And okay. He got so pissed off, he flipped me off. And I was oh, like, wow. yeah, now we're in your head. He was, <laughs> he was pissed. Um, so playing in Scotland, yes. and I think you were there, what, three, four years? Three years. Okay. Yeah. Um, how hard was it to leave? Um, it was pretty easy. I was kind of not tired of playing in Scotland, but I was I had enough of playing in Scotland. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I did. I didn't really want to leave. Yeah. And where did you end up after Scotland? I ended up here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I ended up here. And how did that come about? Um, obviously, I played with Rambo, and um, my name passed through the system, and Rambo was like, "Yeah, I played with him." I just kind of put in a good good word for me with um, Rick. And that's when you had that quick stint at Crystal Palace. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I played with him there. Yeah. So you must have let, I mean, because you weren't there long. No, no, I wasn't alone. It was alone. It was alone, yeah. Was yeah. Alone, yeah. Like a month or yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, just a month and a half, I believe, yeah. Yeah, you must have made an impression then. Yeah, I did, I did. Um, I was actually going to sign for Crystal Palace, but they had signed um, a pre-contract mm -hmm. with Ward. Okay. Yeah, he's still there now. So I literally had just gone there to kind of fill in for Klein. Klein was ill at the time. And um, I went there for a month. I'd done really well. The fans loved me. It was difficult because they already signed the right back front and I came in, so it was fine. That's fair. But the important thing is you left an impression with Rambo. Yes, yes. He comes here. I call this place the third plane of hell because it's so hot. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> and, uh, and, he, and he brings you on. Yeah. yeah. Um, when you got the phone call, was the phone the first call from Rambo? It was actually. It? Yeah? yeah, it was. I was actually on um, international duty when he called me. He was like, oh, your name just passed the system, blah, blah, blah. I spoke to the coach. We would like you to come in. I was like, yeah, of course. Yeah. I didn't mm -hmm. even hesitate. <laughs> and you were playing for Sierra Leone? Like, yeah, I was in Sierra Leone at the time. We had yeah. a friendly against Liberia and um, played that game. And after the game is when I got a call. Yeah, very yeah. cool. So how long was it from the first phone call till you stepped on the ground here in Arizona? Um, I got the call, I believe it was on a Thursday or Friday. And I was out here on a Monday. Wow, yeah. that's quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I came here in the summer for like a week and a bit just to kind of 
look around and I played a game. And then uh, I was going to sign that summer, but I think there was complications with visas and stuff, so then it came this season. You've had problems with tickets before. Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows what we're talking about. Talk about. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, I just had a bit of complication. It wasn't complicated, it was just something just didn't work out at the time, and then I just said, you know, I'll come back. And you missed out on a Africa um, Cup and uh, yeah. game yeah. because of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You made up for it in the, in the future. Yeah, but, for sure. Uh, boy, that must, I mean, that was your first call, if I recall correctly. That was the first time you'd been called up, right? And uh, the ticket, you had a ticket snapping yes. and didn't make the yeah, game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, how many years ago was that now? Many. 13? Yeah, 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 yeah. Somewhere in there? Yes. Yeah. That's crazy. It's bringing back memories now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is a pros Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> But it's great, and do you hope to get called up by the national team again? Uh, let's see what happens. You know, we've been going through a bit of troubles at the moment. Um, we've literally just been given the clearance to play again because mm. we were on a ban. Oh, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, we were on a okay. ban for like the last six or seven months. Wow. Yeah, okay. yeah. So Have you seen happens. Yeah, see what happens. Well, you know, we're seeing like with Kevon, you know, he was gone quite a bit with yeah. Jamaica and I yeah. think Coach Sean's finally said, you know what, enough's enough. Enough's enough, yeah. <laughs> well, I think because the team so that we're doing so well at the moment to have players missing when we're doing so well is it's a bit You know he had to be watching the T V and just dying. Yeah. That you wanted exactly, to be here. Yeah. I was I was speaking to him while he was over there. Uh, he enjoys playing for Jamaica, don't get him wrong, but Of course. You know, once the team's doing so well you want to be involved in it. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um but that's uh yeah, we we don't want to dive into that yeah, exactly. too much. Um, I have a question from a user, semi-related to what we're talking about here. Okay. Um, this is from uh, Chris Francioli, um, and he says, Phoenix Rising bolsters many weapons in the middle of the field, but it is no secret that the biggest tactical advantage is its wings, um, most notably between Solo and yourself. How do you go about fostering the advantage, this advantage on the field? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I think me and Solo just have a great relationship, mm -hmm. honestly. I think we just understand each other so well. He's played at a good level, I've played at a good level, and um, we just seem to vibe. We vibe off the pitch as well, which is a good thing. Yep. You know, we, we talk to each other off the pitch, and um, we laugh and joke, and I think that just kind of stems into on, on us playing, really, together. You know, he's, you see what you can do. Well, no, it's, it's <laughs> you know, though it, it, it took a couple of games for it to gel, yeah. a couple of weeks for it to gel, yeah. and then all of a sudden, I will remember it distinctly, because you were coming down the side of the pitch, and again, you're right in front of us, oh, yeah. right? Solo comes streaking down your right side, right on the right on the field line, mm -hmm. right? You are up there with a the player, and then you're just looking this way, and you just dump the ball off, mm -hmm. right off to Solo, yeah. and I remember just looking at Edward, who's my co-host on the yeah. show, and I was like... That's what's going to happen all season, yeah. right there. And boy, oh boy, you guys are delivering in, in <laughs> yeah. spades. Thank you so much. Yeah. How do you guys? I mean, you talk about your friends on pitch, off the pitch. Mm -hmm. When you're in practice, how do you go about practicing that? How do you refine that? Oh, we do, we're doing a lot of work because um, clearly the coach sees that the relationship that we're building, even on both sides with um, Dia and um, Junior as well, mm -hmm. they have a good relationship as well. And I think he, the coaches just see that, and we work a lot on that. Training, so I think it's just more more of that, just working on it, working on it, and then it just happens on the field naturally. Um, so when you're when you're on the back, you're, you're definitely playing. Well, I'm going to call it fullback position, yeah. right? Because you're winging down the side yeah. all the time. Yeah. Are there times where Rick's saying, "Hey, pull it back pull a little back. bit"? You know, I don't want you up that far. And is is there a push and pull there? Or is He's it, never actually playing? said that to me. The only person that said that to me is Solo. Solos, um, I remember we played, who do we play? Uh, RGB, away, recently. And um, we just like to be most, with this atmosphere, with the um, humidity, mm -hmm. don't bum up, just, just leave me to do all the work. And like, just kind of, because I've never played there before and I was struggling a bit. Like, well, it's a crap field, yeah, the weather's atrocious. Weather was, I've never experienced anything like that before. And he was just like, look, just stay back, you don't need to overlap me today, just leave me to do what I'm doing. I was like, fair enough. That is an interesting conversation. Yeah, yeah. Um, that shows real leadership on the field Definitely. for me, and I think Sol is a great leader. Yeah. Um, he is the man. 
And it's interesting that he is able, because there are a lot of players where they don't get that much freedom to make those kind of calls, yeah. right? They'd have to go to the coach first yeah. and say, yeah. I want to hold um, Mustafa back a little yeah. bit, but he's, he can make oh, that yeah, call. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Very Every cool. time Solo talks, like, we all listen. He, he's got, yeah, he's, he's, he's very wise, man. He's a very yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he makes me laugh, man. Yeah. He's so humble and intense Definitely. in his life. Definitely. Uh, he's great. Um, so another related question, um, exactly what we're talking about. Uh, this is from the ghost of Luke Rooney, uh, the ghostly one. Um, he says, first of all, best wishes on a speedy recovery. Thank you. Um, I'm going to skip the first half of this question first. Um, I'm going to say, well, no, actually I'm not. Um, because of the relationship that you have yeah. with Solo, we're going to back it out a step and say, how would you compare the USL to the SPL mm -hmm. as the first part of the question? Okay. How do you compare the USL with Scottish Premier League? Um, it's not that far off, honestly. Like, it's a competitive league. Like, I wouldn't say like technically players are better at the SPL. Um, I think it's more aggressive in the SPL. Mm -hmm. You get um, a lot more challenges and dirty challenges. But other than that, it's it's very similar. Very similar. Well, you know, the Scots are our angry because yeah. the food they have to eat in Scotland. Exactly. So. <laughs> the haggis, haggis and all that. Uh, have you eaten haggis? I had a little bit of it. I tried it too. I've never gone back. Oh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's something else. Yeah. yeah. I, I can say I did it. That's yeah, it. I tried. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> but no bueno. Yeah. Um, so the follow-up on his question is, are there any mates from SPL that you would love to see come to Phoenix Rising? Um... Yeah, for sure. Um, I played with some good players in the SPL, definitely, and um, I'm sure they'll fit in here. Any from the UK also? I'm sure there are. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, there's plenty. Off the dome, I can't really think right now, but I'm sure there's a lot of players. And you don't want to call one out because everybody in the world watches this show. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, millions of people are going to watch this. Uh, yeah. Tens, yeah. Of, <laughs> tens of tens of tens. <laughs> um, so, I, you know, again, I love the way that you play the ball. You're Thank so you. aggressive. You're quick. You. Um, you're on target. You. Um, it's a lot of fun. If you were able to change one thing right now, what you're doing on the pitch, yeah. what would you want to change? I'd love to have scored more goals. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's... Wouldn't we all? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> a lot of the boys get onto me, Kev, Flemo. When I score, don't celebrate with me. I'm telling you that now. <laughs> oh, wow. It's wrong. <laughs> I've told them. I've told them already. I said, when I score, do not celebrate with me because every day in training, if I take a shot and I scuff it, blah blah, blah they keep telling me I got weak ankles and all of that rubbish. Oh yeah. no! Every day they told oh, me. Oh my god! Yeah, every day they told me I got weak ankles. That's that's, <laughs> that's just foul foul play, yeah, guys. I know, foul yeah, play. No. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, you know what? I'm gonna laugh because when you do score, yeah. I'm gonna be watching it. If you're shrugging them off, I I'm will be. be I will be. <laughs> <laughs> Believe I will be. Oh man, so first time in America is yeah. coming here to play for Phoenix Rising. Um, what do you think of the United States? Oh, I love the States. I've been here a few times. I've got family in the States. Oh, on okay. The east, on the East Coast. Um, so I've been here a few times. I've been Vegas a few times as well. So Super. Yeah, I love the States. Um, oh, you guys just had a couple of weeks off. Uh, you had a bit of a break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did you go to the Grand Canyon with some of the boys? I went to Sedona. Oh, did you? The family, yeah. I went to Sedona. That was amazing. I went to Slide Rock Park. Yeah, yeah. yeah Slide Rock's yeah, a blast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, went sure. there, which is, that was really nice. Did you get some crystals? Get your I did. Hand red? I did actually. Yeah. I'm really into crystals. I've got a tiger's eye. Yeah, I noticed the yeah, tiger's yeah, eye. Yeah, yeah. So. so yeah, I'm really into my crystals. Yeah, yeah. very cool stuff. Yeah. Um, the uh, Sedona uh, personality is just yeah. kind of contagious. Yes, it um, is. It actually is. I like you go out there and just chill. You got the hair, so you could yeah, just sit on exactly. a rock and chill, <laughs> and you know, it would work out. Um, I love learning a little bit about life off the pitch. Um, uh, a lot of fans don't. Uh, know that you guys all live in an apartment yeah. complex together. You have a good time. Who's your roommate? I'm, I live by myself. I got my oh, family. really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, live, I got my family here, so I live with my family. I had no idea you had family here. Yeah. yeah so yeah, who yeah. all's here? My my girlfriend and my kids. Wow, yeah, that's yeah, great. Yeah, 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 Wonderful. Yeah. How old are your kids? Four and two. Four and two. Yes, yes, yes. So a little too young to come out in the seat and watch the games? Or oh, they, they come. Oh, yeah, they're out. They're yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> for sure. That's awesome. Oh, for sure. For oh, that's great. Um, because so few of the players, as you know, have family here. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. To be able to have them here is uh, is oh, wonderful. Yeah. 
So that means that when you're you're uh, not on the pitch, you're busy with your family. Yeah, so. that's why I can't play no computer games. Yeah, there you go. That's, <laughs> there you that's go. a good reason. Yeah. <laughs> no clubbing, no anything like that. No, just see he's behaving. Yeah. He's being a he's being a good good guy. Yeah. So um, kids are going to uh, preschool here. They're homeschooled at the moment. Homeschooled, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. My, my, my girlfriend's doing all the work. How does she like being a, a, a we're going to call her soccer wife? She's a soccer girlfriend. <laughs> whatever you want to call her. Does she enjoy uh, it? She embraces it. She yeah. embraces it. And she loves. She loves coming to. She's my biggest fan. That's for sure. She's my biggest fan. And she's from England. Yeah, she's from England. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say because if she's from Scotland, you'd like have to share her every once in a while. Ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> another Scotland dig. <laughs> Um, so life on the pitch, mm -hmm. prep day, or no, let's not say prep day, game day, how do you prep for the game? I don't have no routine or rituals, anything like that. I'm just kind of easy. I just wake up, eat, chill out, play with the kids. Wow. Yeah, and wait, wait for us to come. If we're playing a home game, obviously, we come, we have a little team all together around three o'clock, then we go back for a couple hours, chill out. Get ready for the game. Super. Yeah, okay. I don't really do much. Keeping it easy. Yeah, very. Yeah. No suit and tie. No. Nah, nothing, very nothing. casual. We're meant to be smart casual, but nah, not me. It's too hot to be wearing a like shirt and all of that. Nah. I'd be like me. anything long sleeve. No, nah, that's nah, not. Nah, 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 nah. That's not happening. I always me. get it from Nate. Nate's always like, oh, you should be wearing this. I was like, Nate, nah, not happening, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but not happening. Nate, I love Nate. He's, oh, he's awesome. A top guy. But he's so funny because he's on top of everything. Yeah. Nothing gets by him. For sure. For um, sure. So you gotta you gotta be careful. Yeah. Speaking of which, we've heard about the wheel. Yes. Uh, the spin. Have you had any uh, any uh, fun with spinning the wheel? Twice. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've been fine twice. Uh, I forgot what it was for. I think. Uh, yeah, he forgot. What it was for. Nah, honestly, I actually forgot. <laughs> I haven't been fine in a long time. In a very long time. So. Fingers crossed it stays like that. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's some unusual choices on the wheel. From yeah, there is. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know a few? Um, I, no, I don't. I just know that I almost got Waz to spin, spin the wheel because oh, yeah? I mentioned casually that he had grabbed some food and took him with him when he left. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was yeah. interviewing Rick and Peter at the time. Yeah. And they're like, he's not supposed he's to do that. He's going to. Gonna do that. <laughs> but it worked out because he was the last person in there. Oh, so okay. he was allowed oh, to. So they got away with it. Yeah. Nah. I can't. Piss him off because he's much, much larger than me. Very, yeah. very, very big. Yeah, yeah. he's a big guy. <laughs> he's a big guy yeah. um, what's your favorite thing about playing with PRFC? Uh, the fans. The fans are great. Um, to be fair, my teammates are great as well. Everyone is gels so well here. There's no big time, we call it big time Charlie's. So there's no big time Charlie's here. Everybody just gets along. And I'm sure you can see it on the pitch as well. We're Absolutely. a fairly close unit. And uh, we hang out. We hang out with each other. We go cinema together. We do as much things together as we can. So cool. Yeah. You know, it's. I got dumped on Twitter the other day because uh, an, another popular Twitter account. Um, I made the comment that um, we aren't cocky like other teams. Mm -hmm. That our humility and getting along is one of our yeah. our features. Yeah. And I firmly believe that. But boy, did I get dumped on, man! Serious. I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, hey, man. I'm just calling. Maybe I worded it a little too soft yeah. or something. But I'm like, no. You know what? We don't have these egos. We don't have these battles nah, going on. Not at all. It's We're very humble. Very humble. Big time chemistry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, I have one or two last questions, and okay. we will be done. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the Austin game. Yeah. Okay. Some people are calling it the biggest night in PRC history. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna argue that because I wasn't here. I was stuck on a stupid oh, airplane from uh, DC here. You missed the game, I'm man. Very. Oh, you know, I got flea bites from this lady's uh, dog who was in the seat in front of me. Oh wow. It was a bad night overall. Just <laughs> very, very bad. That. Sorry to hear that. Very good for you guys. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was a good game. So I watched the game mm -hmm. afterwards. Um, I came out of that game feeling pretty upset with the way that Austin played. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not asking you to comment on what you think mm -hmm. about the Austin play, but you did get a pretty nasty foul yeah. against you, and it was uncalled yeah. for. Yeah. How do you deal with something like that? Because you went down, and, and I was just like, this could be bad. Yeah. Uh, I know it's not bad. I'm not yeah. insinuating it's bad. Yeah. But um, anger, what happens when you're on the field and, and you have a tackle like that, a bad tackle? You know what, with me, I'm not really an angry person. Yeah. I don't really get angry that, that quick, so... When it happened, it was more, I was, I was thinking, I hope my foot's not broken. That's what it was. I was just thinking, because the impact was so intense. 
and initially I, I couldn't touch my feet, like it was the numbness. I was thinking, oh God, what is happening, what's happening? And um, I was in a lot of pain, in a lot of pain. And um, obviously Brennan came over and he was trying to like feel a van and I was like, nah, this, this doesn't feel great. It was a scary, scary moment. Yeah. I mean, for even the people who haven't played, when you get stomped on like yeah, that, man, yeah, people yeah. don't understand how bad that hurts. Yeah, it's yeah. bad. It was, it was, it felt bad, but. So if, you, if you can shake it off and get on, then I'll do that. And I tried, I tried to, came back on the pitch, but I just couldn't. Uh, All right, so we're going to try and get Mustafa angry here. <laughs> Edson Brodhide. He's the, Is he the good? individual. Is that the one I kicked? Joey? Yeah, oh, yeah. The, that hit Kalistri in the, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. In the chest. Yeah, yeah. If one of my teammates had been hit like that, I would not have been a happy camper. Yeah. Um, the reaction on the team was pretty calm, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially when he went in anger mode with the referee, too. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, I, I posted a tweet where I said the dude needs to be out for, for at least five games, you know, because it was so violent. Yeah. How does the team remain calm and focused when something like that happens? Because I'm sure you've seen a hundred times. Somebody gets a bad foul like yeah, that, yeah. the team loses their focus, they go crazy. We didn't do that at all. Nah. Is that what Rick is instilling in you guys? 100%. 100%. It's just the culture of the club. And it's just kind of it's the culture of Rick, and it just kind of stemmed down to everyone else. You know what I mean? Because we represent the manager, mm -hmm. and you know, and his character, and what he wants to do, represents us as well. So we're just such a humble group. It's crazy. Sometimes I feel like we need more bite. Humble group. <laughs> Eat it. We're just so humble. It's crazy. Like for something like that to happen to one of our teammates, and we're staying calm because we understand, like, no matter what we do, he's probably going to get sent off. You know, I mean, for a tackle like that, so there's no point of us kind of reacting, and one of us gets sent off. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so everyone's but kind still, of emotions are high. Oh yeah, for sure. Tired. It's towards the end of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's rough. And Joey himself, I mean, he, he stayed calm as well. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he calm. how many times do you see veterans that are paid millions of dollars yeah, lose yeah. their stuff? And, exactly. You know, and, you know, and that was a really bad tackle. So bad. One of the tackles, a kung fu kick. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. studs completely up, yeah. straight in the chest. Bad. Okay, we're gonna skip it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll go right in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so last thing. Yeah. Uh, we got a big game against Tulsa coming up on yeah, Saturday. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm assuming you guys are leaving what Thursday or Friday morning. Friday morning. morning, Friday Friday morning. Yeah. Um, they're second to last place in the USL. Yeah. If there's ever a chance for this team to be complacent. This is the chance. Yeah. We're, we're not going to be complacent. No way. I, a, lot of, a lot of the players will not allow it to happen. You know, we're, we're too hungry. We want more than 11. You know, I know we, like, if we win this game, we beat the record, but we want to smash the record. We don't just want to beat it. You know, and our complacency is not, it's not in our culture right now. Not at all. If I could put odds, and well, I can actually. I've got to put my money where my mouth is. We have a fairly decent chance of making a run through October. I think we actually have uh, a decent chance at it, but I'm going to put our win streak at 16. Yeah? Yeah. And the reason why is because running all the way through the rest of the season is such an ultra, ultra rare thing. Yep. Yeah. Arsenal's yeah. done it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. There you go. There you go. Um, but it, it's going to be, I mean, hopefully I'm dead wrong and we, we make so. that run. I hope so. Um, I was just reading to, listening to another podcast and you don't listen to pods, but Tyler Terrence and Devin Kerr, they are the voices of Phoenix Rising. They okay. call all the games. Okay. They've got a great podcast called Three Honest Lads. And today they released a pod talking about um, East versus West okay. and overall which conference is the better conference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fairly close, but they gave the East the edge. Okay. Um, but it's because East plays so much defense, very, very defensive. Mm -hmm. The sole exception, Phoenix Rising. And I was like, okay. And they try <laughs> really hard to not be biased towards Phoenix Rising because yeah. they know everybody knows that they call the games and everything. Yeah, yeah. So they can be a little cool on us sometimes. Okay. But they were definitely like, you know what, except Phoenix Rising. And I thought, that's, that's right. Mm -hmm. Everybody at the beginning of the year, defense problem, defense problem, you know, blah, blah, blah. Look where we are now. Yeah. You know, how do you like me now? I mean, yeah. We're, we're, I mean, it's clear to see, like, it's a big achievement. No matter what league you're playing in, to go 10 unbeaten is pretty impressive, you know. So, we're, and look we're, at all those clean sheets mixed yeah, in with that. Exactly. So, we're not stopping at 10. We're not stopping at 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Or 16. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're trying to go 
unbeaten, even in the championship. Keep the focus. Definitely. We will be behind you a thousand percent. Thank you so much. Can't wait to see this game on Saturday. I mean, it's just a shame it's going to be a away game. I know, right? I know. I think our next two games are away, right? Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. August 10th, uh, we're going to have a big fan pregame party. Oh, nice. We're making a big deal out of you guys coming oh, yeah. back home, which oh, you guys nice. won't be able to do anything about it, but the fans yeah. are, are very excited about it. We're going to have a good time. That's good. Any uh, shout-outs or anything you want to give before we wrap things up? You know what? I want to kind of talk about my family just started um, a charity. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's called Lunchbox. And we're opening um, a library back home in Sierra Leone where kids can um, come in, get a book. And if they read the book, we give them meals. Really? Yeah, yeah. So it's called Lunchbox. If you want to check it out, we're on Instagram, Facebook. And um, yeah, that's our project right now as a family. So you're not on social media? I'm, I'm on social media. I'm on Instagram now. And okay. I'm on Facebook. So if you follow me on Instagram at MSN Dumbuya24, um, I'm going to start posting some information about it. Yeah. Okay, I will make sure that we put links in the please, show please, and in the comments awesome. and stuff, and we will definitely support that. That would be awesome. Thank you so that much. That would be, you know, support reading and kids. Thank you very much. See, that's iron right there, people. <laughs> <laughs> Between you and Mala, I'm like, oh. <laughs> Mala is very strong. He is, strong he is. Baby, yeah. uh, Mustafa, we wish you all the best this season. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you. All right. Wow, I honestly had no idea Mustafa was a family man. Yeah, I was really surprised, too. Uh, one other thing surprised the heck out of me, and that was, he doesn't play FIFA? Yeah, well, he does have kids, so he's like eh. trying to be you know, responsible with that whole thing. So good on you, Mustafa. Do that. Um, there was one other big thing. We're just going to bring it up again, Dan, because you, know, you went crazy about it. Uh, North London is red. Dan's throwing down. But thanks a lot, Mustafa, for coming by. We really enjoyed having you on the show. It was fantastic. And that is going to wrap it up for this episode. We are the PRFC Fan Show, a fan show by fans. For fans. And we will see you next time.